me. Welcome to the Carnivore Family Channel, where we grill, eat, and then repeat. Today, I'm going to take you through how we navigated our way of eating during camps this past summer. Our kids went to six different camps, near and far. We stay busy. And this was our first experience having kids gone overnight for an extended length of time since we became carnivores. So like everything else this past year, it was a learning experience for our family. So hold on to your briskets and I'll walk you through what we did, what worked, and what didn't. Before we get started, do me a huge favor and hit the subscribe button and ring that bell. When we're done here, check out the Carnivore family on social media and our store. Links in the description box below. Hi, I'm Rebecca Reese, and if you're new here, this is my husband, Louie. And these are our eight kids. We have adopted the carnivore way of eating just over a year ago. If you've seen our video about tackling the holidays, you'll know that we have this wildly controversial policy of not doing cheat meals for any reason. It derails us, we don't feel good, and we don't want to raise our kids to associate food that is bad for them as a treat. We're trying to optimize our health and teach our kids to be accountable for themselves along the way. When it came to camp, here is what we learned. The first step was to communicate with the camp in advance. All forms had a place requesting information on allergies or special dietary needs. I tried to keep it simple and used a variety of phrases that would come across as innocuous as possible knowing that we would need to follow up with more details no matter what I wrote. For example, no grains or sugars, we will send supplemental food as needed. I did not write no plants even though we don't consume them anymore because I thought it would be more confusing than helpful. No matter what I wrote, I was always redirected to someone in charge of the kitchen. In these conversations, I learned really fast that kitchens these days are very prepared to accommodate special diets. The first woman I talked to told me that out of 50 boys, she had a dozen kids who were either gluten-free, dairy-free, egg-free, nut-free, or some combo. A couple of vegetarians and a couple of other random allergies like pineapples and tomatoes. So basically, we were different, but not unique in needing special accommodations. And it hit me that so many kids have food allergies or intolerances these days that cafeteria workers just have to expect special requests as a way of life now. Makes you wonder. I also discovered that all of them had at least heard of keto and several had tried it themselves or were preparing keto food for someone at camp already. That helped immensely because I could say that carnivore is a form of keto, we just skip on the nuts and produce. It also meant that although they weren't on the menu, things like scrambled eggs and bacon were actually going to be available nearly every day upon request. In one case, the kitchen staff also offered to keep portions of meat from the mixed dishes out if my kid wanted it. So basically they were surprisingly accommodating, especially as we really emphasize that we are not asking or expecting them to prepare special meals for our kids. I explained that we were planning to prepare and bring plenty of supplemental food for them and asked if we could see a sample of the menu in advance to help us with that. Yes, yes. Yes, chef. They were all willing to do that, so I was able to go over the menus with my kids. This allowed me to help them pick out what they could likely eat out of the available options. While acknowledging that these foods may or may not be ideally prepared for us, we are accepting there will be some small compromises. Here's the menu from one camp. Most of the food was not going to work, but there were some options when we looked close. I wanted my kids to start learning how to make decisions for themselves. Let's start with breakfast. Monday and Tuesday are out, but on Wednesday they have eggs, bacon, and sausage, which will make a fine meal. And on Thursday, it listed boiled eggs and leftover meat. So that will likely be fine as well. Now on to the lunches. On Monday, they have pulled pork, which I remind my kid is fine as long as they don't put the sauce on it, which typically here in the South, sauce is served on the side. Tuesday and Wednesday were no-goes and Friday was beef barbacoa, which could probably be fine with sour cream and cheese while skipping the rest of the toppings listed. For dinner, the first night was a pasta dish. Tuesday was poppy seed chicken. We would not make something like that at home, but I told my kid to use her best judgment, 
If it's saucy, then it probably has a fair amount of sugar or flour in it. If it's dry seasoning, then it might be okay for the occasion. Same goes for the ranch chicken on Wednesday. Tuesday, they have pork roast and that will be fine. And I reminded them that if you bite into anything and it tastes oddly sweet, then you know the seasoning it was prepared with probably has sugar in it, amongst other odd things, and it might be best to skip it. After a year of eating almost exclusively meat, their taste buds know what the real deal tastes like at this point. They actually don't really like the artificial tastes that come with most processed foods and seasonings anymore at this point. So now we knew what we can eat from the menu, and we knew about how many meals we'd need to supplement. The day before camp, I batch cooked large amounts of their favorite foods like steak bites and hamburgers. And we also purchased several packs of deli meats and sliced cheeses for meat and cheese roll-ups. I also made a giant bag of jerky and pork chips for them to take as well. We packed it all into a cooler and went to camp. After checking in, they showed us where we could store their food. Most camps had shelves set aside in their fridges for kids bringing their own food. And one had a whole special fridge just for this purpose. At one camp, I chuckled as I stacked containers of steak and hamburgers next to rows of gluten-free Oreos, dairy-free cheeses, and almond milk. At least, we weren't the only high-maintenance campers. I also let the oldest take a case of sparkling water to his camp because I knew they were going to have sodas available, so this gave him his own fizzy drinks to enjoy. After each camp, we assessed what was left over, what they liked and disliked, and adjusted for the next time. Some of my younger ones also went to a soccer day camp and I basically just assumed they wouldn't have any food that my kids could eat and packed them their own snacks like cheese sticks and cream popsicles that we make ourselves. So how did all of this work out in the end? Well, my teen son realized after the first camp that he did not care for the camp food and asked to just bring all of his own meals going forward. Sure dude, happy to do it. My three oldest daughters struggled at their first camp. If you watched my video where I interviewed my kids, you'll remember that the twins were quite clear they don't plan to eat this way as adults. <laughs> so at camp they admitted that they did stray a bit and ate pancakes, popcorn, and a few other things here and there. My oldest daughter was a little more careful but did admit to having some nachos but tried not to go wild. We had a nice heart-to-heart -heart conversation on the way home about why we eat the way we do. We emphasized that they weren't in trouble we don't want them to feel like they need to be sneaky or hide their mistakes. And we aren't doing this to punish them, deprive them, or make them miserable. We went over again that we eat this way because we want them to be healthy and grow up as healthy as possible. And yes, the occasional camp food binge is not going to be an issue in the long run, but we're trying to build new habits as a family and not continue to see food that's bad for us as a treat. Just because their bodies tolerate it okay now does not mean that they always will. We remind them that as their parents, it's our job to raise them the best we can, and when they're adults, they will have to make these decisions for themselves. Camp is just a tiny practice round for them to build those self-discipline skills. At home, we went back to our normal way of eating, and at their second camp, my oldest daughter was definitely more careful. She requested a different variety of food and came home in even better spirits. As always, I'm really proud of my kids and their willingness to keep pursuing this way of eating as a family. This was a new experience for all of us and we learned a few tricks for the future. My best advice I can give you for your family is to plan ahead. Be prepared to make and take your own meals. Not be hard on the kids if it doesn't go well. Learn from the experience and try again next time. The goal is to build towards a better way of eating as a family. Now to wrap this up, I want you to know that I'm giving away my Carnivore Family Grocery Guide to help you get started. Check out the description box for more details. Leave a comment and let me know if your kids had fun at camp this summer. If you found any part of this video helpful, please consider sharing it with a friend or on social media. Smash that like button to show your support and feel free to email me questions at carnivorefam at gmail.com. And you might think about checking out this video here where I interview my husband and find out why we went carnivore as a family. And remember, if all else fails, go eat a steak. You want to do that? I try try to be a little closer, like maybe come up over my shoulder or something. I got my caught up in my throat.
description box for Bok, 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 Bok. Whoop. 